Good morning and welcome back to the adventures of Macadamphia and my video on how to build an automated irrigation system. Okay, so firstly I've, uh, I've bought an, an outdoor electric control box. Um, it's got a hinged door on it, it's got a little latch on it, uh, a rubber seal to keep it out from the weather. Uh, what I'm surprised to see it's actually twin walled, which is quite, quite good. And what I'm happy to see is it's actually got a removable plate that you can take out so I can fix everything to that first out of the box before I mount it inside the box, which is going to make life a hell of a lot easier. Secondly, I've purchased the, uh, a solar panel, complete with a, a control unit, a voltage control unit. Uh, they came together in a package. The solar panel is a bit overkill. It's, uh, it's 30 watts. I could have got away with 10 watts, but it was on offer. It came together in a package. Uh, and it also means that if I ever decide to use the control box or the power for anything else, this will more than cope with it. Okay, next in line I've got the battery, which is just really there for demonstration purposes. I will be purchasing another smaller battery than that. Then I've got a, a fuse box. I'm going to make one fuse box between the battery and the, the timers, so that if there's any fault with the timers, it protects the battery. If there's any fault with the battery, it protects the timers. Okay, nextly, I'm going to fit uh, two timers. Two timers, if you're familiar with our land and uh, or with the farm, one timer is going to do the uh, the lower level of olives, and the second timer is going to do the uh, the orange grove and uh, on all the fruit trees. There will also be fit in this box at a later date two more timers, one to do another row of trees and the vegetable patch. Okay, so after that, we've got another fuse box. I'm going to seems a bit like overkill, but I'm going to put two sets of fuses in. So that if these wires join together, which you, these are the valves which open the uh, the water blow up, if they join together and short out, then the timers are protected from the valves, and again vice versa. So finally, we've got these these valves here. These are twelve volt valves. They're, they're quite a quite a rare beast. I actually ordered these, ordered these direct from China. They're not readily available here. These normally come in uh, twenty four volt AC house power. Uh, obviously, we're doing this off grid and it's to be powered by 12 volt solar power, so we needed 12 volt DC. But quite readily available from somewhere like AliExpress, not overly expensive. Okay, so that's going to be the final item in our line to, to make this control box. Before we get on and we start uh, putting this together or offering it all up together to see how we're going to lay it out in the box, I just want to mention uh, we're having multiple timers. Now, some of you out there might think, well, why don't you just uh, water everything on one timer? The reason for that is, is there just isn't enough pressure in the water to water all the all the farm at once. We have to we have to do individual tiers or individual sections at a time. Otherwise, there isn't just there isn't enough pressure or flow in the water for the uh, the tricklers and the uh, and the drip feeders to work. They need a minimal pressure, and that can't be obtained if you try and water everything all at once. Okay, so I'm going to start by uh, offering everything up and and putting it in the box and see how uh, I can lay everything out in there. Okay, so I've quickly offered these up uh, into the box and see what we've got. We've got the two timers obviously at the top. I've got to leave room to get the cables connected into the bottom here. Uh, the control, the actual controller for the voltage controller from the solar panel is going to go there. I'm going to leave space for two more controllers here. And then the fuse boxes, I'm not sure if they're going to, I'm going to bolt them through the sides here, probably up a bit, or whether I'm going to try and glue them. I may try and glue them first. Um, Obviously, I'll wire them before I put them in. Okay, so I've already done the checks on voltage. Obviously, if um, I'll take you over to these units over here. Obviously, if these drew a lot of power, uh, I would have to be careful that it wasn't too much power from the timers. If it was too much power for the timers and there was a risk of them burning out, then I would have had to use relay switches. As it happens, these only use at a max of about 420 milliamps when you first when they first activate. And once they're activated and they're open, to maintain them open, they use about 300 milli milliamps. So not not even half an amp. And that's, the timers can more than cope with that. So thankfully we haven't got to mess about sticking relay switches in. So I think your first job is probably to, uh, is wiring one of these fuse boxes and prep it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loop these connectors. One, two, three, all together with wires. And then the final one, doubling out with a long cable to get to go to the battery. Um, I'm going to loop them all together on this fuse box, but what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use one outlet to each timer. The reason being for that is that if one timer burns out, 
and you're all wired into the same circuit, it all could burn out all four. So I'm going to keep each timer on a separate circuit. Okay, so we've jumped along with the wiring a bit. I didn't want to bore you with each individual stage. I've made a, a slight change to the design as I've gone along. What I've decided to do is uh, instead of switching the live wire through the timer to the solenoid, I'm just going to switch the negative wire. That means I won't need a second fuse box. So uh, what we've got here now is we've got uh, the live from the battery going into the fuse box. We've got the live coming out of the fuse box. This is the live that powers the actual timer here. And then a separate one coming out of here, so the, the, the live is still on a separate circuit to each individual timer and solenoid. And that goes to there. These two positives off here will go to the to the uh, the actual solenoid switch for the uh, water valve. That will be uh, permanent live. Then we've got negative from the battery. Goes straight to where the into the negative in the controller. That loops round to the negative input to the switch that loops around to the other controller positive uh, negative and that loops around again then to the other switch so basically i've looped all the negative into that circuit that's a shared circuit so the two timers have a, a shared negative circuit but they have a separate positive circuit so that uh, they'll be individually fused hope that makes sense i'll flip them over in a minute and just show you from the back uh, from the back edge Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure if you're going to pick it up with, on the camera here, but these timers are really basic and uh, and, and well labelled. You, it, it labels it live, negative, and then you've got a switch. It doesn't really matter which way you uh, put the wires on around that way. So basically, again, we've got a positive wire to the positive, negative wire to the negative. That negative wire is looping around to negative of the switch, and this is the outlet that will go to the solenoid. And then I've also used that negative through to the other timer as well i hope that makes sense okay then so i'm gonna i'm gonna crack on to the next stage which i think is properly te testing the circuit so i'll set that up with a battery uh and a meter and we'll see if this actually works okay so i've quickly made up some uh, makeshift cables run to this battery here positive to the positive into the fuse box negative from the negative loop into all the controllers Okay, so we'll test the first controller. You see, I've, uh, I've actually hooked this up to a meter and I've made the two connections that will go to the first solenoid valve. Okay, so I'm going to manual switch it. If you watch the meter box there, hopefully. It says. There you go. So that, that's got uh, 13.2 13, 13 volts there going to it. So uh, that one's working. Now I'll switch that off again manually. There we go. Okay, and I'll just check. I'll switch the other meter on just in case I've got my wires crossed and uh, I don't want to end up with uh, both both meters controlling one solenoid. So let's just test this one. And as you can see, that one's on. It's got red on there. But there's no part of the meter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap the wires over to the other, so other water valve wires and see if this uh, this meter actually controls that. Okay, so I've quickly switched over the meter to the outlet from the other meter switch. So you can see it's on zero. Okay, I'm going to quickly manual this on. There we go. And as you can see on the meter, that's uh, 13, 13 volts. Okay, so I'll switch it off again. There we go. That, that's off. And I'll just switch this other one on. we've got no cross wires and you can see there's no reading on the meter so what we've got then basically if we've got the wiring done and we've got the uh, both meters working independently and supplying independently power to what's going to be the two water valves so okay we can move on to the next stage okay so we've uh, got the timers and the solar control unit actually uh, screwed into the unit it's um, still still loose in there because i've still got to i'll drill the hole in the back there so we've got to bring the wires in from the back for, to go to the actual valves and also from the solar panel. So, moving on, we go across, we've found a bit of old steel in around the yard, which we're going to use to, to mount it on. And what I've done is I've cut a V here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to bend this over to the right, and then that's going to give us our pitch, hopefully, for our solar panel, so the solar panel is sticking up at the sun. Okay, so I'll just bend that and I'll, I'll bring you back in. Okay, so. I cut the uh, a V out of this steel here, folded it, 
and then I welded it. This is a galvanised steel, so I had to clean some of the galvanised off a bit before I could weld. If you weld galvanised steel, please be careful because the fumes are poisonous, so make sure you've got good ventilation or the fumes aren't going straight up into your face when you weld. After that, I've just sprayed it with a bit of silver wheel, wheel paint to try and blend it in and uh, and keep the weather out of it. Okay, so after that, then I've uh, I've drilled two fixing two fixing holes, one here, one here. You can see the same inside the box, one there, and one down in there to fix the fix the box actually onto the post. I've also done a, a 10 mil hole in the middle, which doesn't go all the way through. These these two other ones do go all the way through for bolts because the wires are going to go through there and then run down the centre of the pole. So next I've uh, I've drilled a hole in the pole here. This is a waterproof gland. Uh, the the wires from the uh, solar panel will pass through that, and uh, then I'll tighten it up, and it'll make a seal to stop water from running down the cable and down into the inside and into the box. Uh, I'll just bring you back over to the back end of the uh, solar panel. What I've done there, this is a cable. It's like a speaker-like type cable. I've put some uh, heat shrink on here to give extra protection, and when this passes through the gland, it'll also make a better seal than uh, sort of a figure eight type cable this is now around it will make a better seal so all the timers are now done uh, just a difficult bit figure out how to fit, how to set the timers up but we're all in there we've got our two timers we've got our uh, solar control unit we've got our fuse box and then we've just got our two wires Hang on, two wires here negative and live for our battery so it's all connected and ready to go uh, new battery has arrived from Amazon that's here now so hopefully we're all ready to rock and roll so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt this all, all this lot together. Uh, hopefully I've drilled all my holes right, and then I'll bring you back in to see what it's like. Okay, so that's about as far as we could go with it now. We've got the solar power panel on. We've got the cable coming out the solar panel into the gland, which then runs down through the centre of the tube and comes into the back of the box here. We've also got a draw cord in here ready to pull the cables up through the bottom bottom of the post up through the ground they're going to go to the electronic valves and just to finish it all off I've, uh, I'll put an end cap in the end of this pole here to stop any water from getting in these are ready available from any photo around here okay so next up is we're gonna to have to get down to the farm and get it fitted obviously until I've got all the cables up through here we're not going to be able to screw in the timer it'll put the battery or anything else in so what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm uh, preparing the valves um, they're made up of a, a reducer. For some reason, I've bought a one inch. I can't remember. I think they probably did a three quarter inch, but anyway, I bought the one inch, so I've had to buy a reducer. This reduces from one inch down to three quarter inch, and then we've got a compression connector which is threaded one side here, and then you just slide the pipe in the other side and tighten it up, and that makes a seal there. These joints have a very loose thread, so when you use a PTF ta M tape, don't be shy. Put plenty on, so almost so you can't see the threads any longer. Uh, so plenty of PTFM tape, otherwise it will leak. So I've done that side, that's that side done. I've got this side to do as well, and then one more valve, and then we'll be ready to go down the farm and uh, get them fitted. And then you have it, uh, two, two electric valves ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we've managed to get uh, two wires threaded, two speaker cables threaded through this, through this pipe here. Uh, that's one for each valve, which will go all the way back through this pipe. Underneath here, and comes up here. This will go up the center mounting tube of the uh, timer and up to the timer. Okay, so we've got our pipe coming down from the top there, down here, through the gray pipe, out this side. And we've got our first valve fitted, our first electronic valve. So we've just got the wires to connect up to that. On the end here, we'll go a stop end, which I specially make with a hole in it, which this in turn then will then plug into. Going along here we've got uh, another valve. This does the water, it's taking it all the way down to the olive grove down below. Another electronic valve there and you can see the electronic wires here. Now we've got two sets of wires here. Um, there. They've got to go to here and then the other set, I think I'm going to take a nick out the pipe here, pull the wires through to make a connection on to here. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do here is try and take a, a little hole out of here with the standing knife without cutting through the wires and pull one of those two wires through here to power this valve. Okay, so I've taken this stick out the side of the pipe. I've pulled this wire through to go to this valve here. 
I'll set another piece of pipe on and I'll slice half it off. Now I'll slide, sl slide this along onto here, grip, and then slide this other length, a 40 millimeter pipe up, cover the joint. May put some tape on or something later, but the main thing, like I said in previous videos before, the enemy here in Spain is the opposite to England. The enemy is the sun and the rain's our friend. Okay, so we've got our two cables from our electronic valves. I've added another extra drawstring onto it uh, to add future wires uh, from other parts of the land. I've attached that to the drawstring that's going up through the centre of the post and control box. So I'll try and pull that through now. Okay, so as you see, we've got the timers in. In the end, I didn't fix this fuse box or glue it to anything. I've, it just slots in there and wants to sit in there nicely. It's not like it's in a car and it's moving around a lot, so I think that'll be fine. Batch is wired up. Um, even though it's not showing charging, it's pretty dull at the minute, so I'm not too worried about that. And I know the solar panel is working because all, all the display lit up before I connected the battery. So it was powered by the solar power, not the battery before. So I think we'll, we'll leave that overnight. Uh, if it's sunny tomorrow, we'll see if, um, if it's actually charging the battery. If not, I'll have to revert back to the instructions. The system ended up working fine and the battery stabilised after a few days. We were away in northern Spain for almost a month and the automated irrigation system worked perfectly during this time. The only slight tweak I had to do was increase water in hours to account for the reduced flow from the electric valves. So all that remains is to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.